Messiah was a man of overcoming horrid injustices to become one of the most prominent preachers of his time. First, let's start with the obvious. Lyle was born to slave parents named Lyle and Nancy in Virginia in the year 1750, but served in Savannah, Georgia. Lyle always had a knack for religion, if you will, and his master Henry Sharp caught onto this ability quickly. Soon after, Sharp let Lyle preach to the slaves and eventually got his license in 1778. This made George Lyle the first African-American preacher in the Americas. Lyle got his success started when he was still just a slave, preaching to his fellow friends and foes, whom were all owned by the same person, Henry Sharp. Sharp would then die, but to avoid being re-enslaved by Sharp's heirs, Lyle indentured himself to a British soldier named Colonel Kirkland, who helped him reach a land owned by the British, a land called Jamaica. We will later get into Lyle and Jamaica in the commercial, but... We need to tell you why Lyle should be in inducted to the IHOP, the International House of Preachers. The IHOP was founded in 2013 and has inductees such as Martin Luther King Jr., Pope John Paul II, and God. The IHOP is held in the wonderful Lost Springs, Wyoming, where George Lyle will be running against Jesus Christ, Pope Benedict XVI, and Malcolm X. Only three of the four will go in, so we want you to vote for George. Next, we are going to show an interview with George Lyle and an 18-year-old named Harold Burley on the site of where George Lyle first preached, Savannah, Georgia. Hello, Mr. Lisley. It's a pleasure. It's Lyle, but nice to meet you too, Harold. Okay, on to the questions. Why and how are you important? Uh, I was important in many ways, I think. I am a modest, very modest man, and I do not like to think of myself higher than any one of my equals, white or black. I pioneered a way to spread Christianity all over the world, from the plains of Savannah, Georgia, to the lonely island of Jamaica. Okay, on to the next question. What did you do for a living, and why did you do it? Uh, I was a preacher, as I thought you would know from the further questions and the fact you were interviewing me. But regardless, I shall answer the question. Uh, as I said, I was a preacher, and my master at the time, in Savannah, by the name of Henry Sharp, caught on, told me about preaching. At first I was tentative, I didn't really love the idea, but then I caught on to it, and started to enjoy it, and did it my whole life, in many in different countries. Okay. Do you take pride in being the first African-American preacher. Yes, I do. Uh, I inspired many other people, as I, as I thi think in my heart, but I never know. You can never really know. But sure, it, it's being the first of anything is an honor, whether it's the first person to smash watermelons on your forehead or the first <laughs> president. So, yes, I take pride in it, and it gave me the opportunity to spread Christianity my entire life. Good. We now are going to our second interviewer, this time with Colonel Kirkland's wife, named Debbie Smith Kirkland. The two have stayed in touch throughout their lives, ever since Debbie's husband helped George reach Jamaica on a ship called the Zebra. Hi there, George. It's nice to see you, Debbie. Uh, I'll do questions now. After two years of you paying me and my husband, I understand that you baptized 400 children in, the, in just the span of 10 years. How did you do it? It was hard. It was tough. But I had accomplished what needed to be accomplished. The hard part was not obviously baptizing the children. It was finding 400 black children that needed to be baptized. For none of those 400 were white children, which I still am not proud of to this day for not letting, not necessarily letting them, because they were welcome, but spreading the word out to them. And, yes, that's, that's my answer. I understand. I heard that in Jamaica you built a free school for black children. Why was that? I honestly do not know. It wound out being very successful, but I really don't understand why I did it. It was kind of spur of the moment idea that just kind of popped in my head. I built it. I didn't really do anything with it. 
but it was, yes, it was a free school for black children, and it was taught by black people that I met on along my way in my journeys that I thought would be very good teachers. So, yeah, mainly preachers. Okay. It was a religious school. Oh, I did not know that. I don't think you did tell me. Why did you indent yourself to my husband and me? Oh, well, I, I believe I do have told you, Ms. Kirkland, but I will for you again right now. I do have a bad memory. Okay, so I did it really solely because I had no choice. I couldn't bear to be re-enslaved by Sharp's heirs, and I, I just couldn't do it. So you gave me an opportunity I just couldn't turn down, and so I went to Jamaica. And I thank you every day for the opportunity you gave me. And you and your husband, we thank you. Wasn't that touching? Well, anyway, remember, if you want to vote for George Lyle, you can go to www.internationalhouseofpreachers.gov slash vote for George. Remember, that address is www.internationalhouseofpreachers.gov slash vote for George. Or you could call the number today on your screen. But wait! There's more. If you call the hotline in the next 20 minutes, you will receive this nice plush hoodie for free. All you have to do is call the hotline and pay separate shipping and handling. And this hoodie could be yours today, but it's not included. Hold, Hold right, right there. there! There's more again. If you vote for George and shoot us a quick email at votefordeorge at the government of IHOP.gov, George Lyle himself could appear at your school or business, and all you have to do is pay shut up shipping and handling. Better not include. I'm George Lyle, and I approve of this message.